What is up and welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to watch Jake Gyllenhaal's workout to get his ridiculous roadhouse body. Now, guys, I'm an IFBB professional bodybuilder, a strength conditioning coach, and I'm a actual trained stunt actor. So I can chime in on these things and give my opinion because guess what? I do this for a living. There's that saying, jack of all trades, master of none, but oftentimes being a jack of all trades is better than being a master of one. And that is who I am. I am a jack of all trades. I do it all. So let's just see if this stuff is actually legit. Does he actually have to do these things to get his beautiful, ridiculously sexy? Let's, let's go. When I received the news that Jake got the role for Roadhouse, I was eager to sit down with him and get his vision and expectations. Jake Gyllenhaal's vision and expectations will be that of the director's vision and expectations for Roadhouse. Jake and his coach are going to talk about, hey, look, man, how do I look sexy on camera? Because my shirt's going to be off and I'm going to be punching people. That's the conversation he's having. I spoke with the stunt team to understand their needs. I spoke with the director and producer to understand their expectations. Not only did Jake need aesthetics, but needed to perform stunts across from Conor McGregor, a professional athlete in the UFC, who has also never performed stunts on screen. Hey, fellas! Looks like you're having a smashing tonight! Okay, let me give you guys an actual, like, how this actually works, straight up. So, I got an email from production. They asked me a few things, you know, what am I good with? I said no to one thing. That meant, like, literally, it was, like, cutting my hair. I'm like, I'm not cutting my hair. Not happening. But the rest of it basically was, we're doing some stunts, throwing, punching, water stuff, whatever. So, they kind of give you a breakdown so you understand what you're getting yourself into so you can prepare. So, this is a very, very normal process for this. And if he's actually doing the stunts, which he was doing some of the stunts there with Conor McGregor, he has to get in some pretty good shape because I got that experience the hard way. My first movie I was in when I was actually doing stunts, I was just coming off of my last year competing, which is like a few years ago, and I didn't realize how much I'd be running around. I was in Kids vs. Aliens, I was chasing kids around, I was in a prosthetic, I had these big claws on, and I was running and moving and body acting, I had to throw stuff, huck things around, chase things around, and then it's like take after take after take. So there is a muscle endurance slash cardio component in stunt acting that is 100% prevalent that you have to get yourself prepared for because not only have to, do you have to do the actual stunts, but then you have to do lines as well too. So you can't be like <clears throat> out of shape doing it. So I get this. Let's just see how they actually train though. So Jake needed athleticism, resiliency, and overall strength. This would also feed the mind and mentality he would need to get up after a fall. A potential punch or a kick. I got a tip for you. Don't let no one get this close. Come on. Okay, so let me tell you something right now. That's all for show. It's an A-list celebrity who's worth millions of dollars. He's the star of the show. Anything that happens to him, the production gets like delayed, shut down, and there's like hundreds of thousands of dollars daily. Like if something happens in a day, they gotta shut everything down. So Jake Gyllenhaal ain't getting punched and he's not getting kicked. That's his for show. You out of your mind. Stop it. After taking all of this into consideration, I then had to sit down and build a program that would ultimately build the foundation of the Dalton character. I'm really excited to see what we're actually doing here. Again, when it comes to performance, Jake Gyllenhaal might be doing some fight scenes, but when we're doing fight scenes, no one is being contacted. No one's actually getting punched. No one's being kicked. So let's just see what we're actually doing here, and I'll call, I'll call, you know, I'll, I'll be like, cap or bullshit. Let's go. The Proteus is an amazing piece of equipment used mostly by performance centers to help train athletes in every plane of motion and also to help increase power production. We use it primarily for priming the nervous system, proprioception, learning movement patterns, and a lot for warming up joints and metabolic training. I've actually used this with Phil Drew. It is a actually useful tool. It is very, very good for all the reasons that he just said. But is Jake Gyllenhaal doing those things? When it comes to like actually punching and kicking and running and jumping, understand this. Yeah, he's doing all the good punching and stuff, but he's really not punching anybody. There's really no, like what he's using here, that does work. If you're an actually trained athlete that's going on to whatever performance that you're doing, whether it's, you know, you know football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, whatever, hip drive, you know, explosiveness, great, but that's usually when you're actually like doing the actual activity. Jake Gyllenhaal isn't. So is this necessary? To be honest, when it comes to just 
overall what he has to get prepared for probably more so just like getting your cardio up just having good cardio so you can last in doing these and doing some of those scenes because again it's gonna be take after take after take after take most of the sets now we're doing we do sled are time pushes. sets we try to keep his work capacity up keep him moving keep him sweating keep burning fat okay the, that's what he said that makes the most sense we need him to just keep moving around if he would just say like yo man we just need jake to move around a lot i want to make it fun you know what i mean because like sitting there walking on a treadmill kind of sucks for a while so i want jake not to be boring jake's probably like yo man you know what man i'm sick and tired of this boring ass training i'm fighting mixed martial arts man put me through some mixed martial arts stuff i really want to feel like i'm a mixed martial arts i want to feel like i'm in the ufc because my character is in the ufc in this version of roadhouse Just do these guys, don't do these. If anyone's watching this and be like, yo man, cause there are people watching this. I know 99% of the people watching this know damn well that he's not actually doing this and not gonna be like, hey man, I wanna look like Jake Gyllenhaal. Let me do some crawls in the ground with seven plates strapped to my back. No, you wanna look at Jake Gyllenhaal? You wanna look like him? Get your ass in a calorie deficit, get on the treadmill, step or whatever, do some cardio and do a regular ass hypertrophy workout. Do a push pull legs, you're good. But he's not doing this to get himself in shape. You know how many calories you burn pushing a sled like that? Way less than you do walking on a stepper. Unnecessary. I'm sitting I'm sitting in here and I feel a lot of gratitude, but I know that's, I know that's uh, crazy thing to say. The gratitude. Jake went into this movie full of obligation, honor, duty, to follow in Patrick's footsteps. It was incredible to watch. What? I honor and duty to follow in Patrick's footsteps. Because Patrick Swayze was a UFC fighter who decided to... What? That's not even the, not even the same movie. How are you going to... The only thing about the movie that's the same is the fact that it's called Roadhouse. If you guys seen the original, Patrick Swayze wasn't a mixed martial artist. He wasn't in the UFC fighting. These guys are the best. Who's writing this shit? These guys are... The writers are awesome. He wants to follow in the footsteps of Patrick Swayze. He wants to make sure that he just honors his name and he commits to the role. So he just does exactly what Patrick Swayze did in the old movie, but not at all because he's doing UFC stuff instead. Because we had to, because, you know, it's modern day and they'd have UFC back then, but he's still following in Patrick Swayze's footsteps. It was incredible to watch. Incredible to see him morph into his character. Morph into his character? You know, he morphs into his character acting. Acting. You know what takes a lot of like fortitude, sacrifice, sitting on set for like 15, 16, 17, 18 hours, legit. I've done it before. I noticed like I literally sat in like makeup for 16 hours of the day and literally sat there until I had to go on set for like five minutes. I'm start talking to my daughter. Hey, baby, how you doing? I got a mask on and shit. Like, hey, what's going on? I got to eat food through a mask. My scene's not on for like ever. That takes... Because they know you don't watch. They know you don't know. So they got to they gotta hype it up. Whether it's squats or deadlifts and the variations thereof, we want to keep the muscle coordination at a high. What do you mean? What do you mean muscle coordination? You mean just like good form? Doing a safety bar is great. It's easier to put yourself in an optimal position to do a squat. Hip and knee flexion, a safety bar is absolutely awesome. I think it's a great tool to use for sure. But what are you talking about? Safety bar squats blast your legs without challenging your shoulder mobility. Why it's called the safety bar, man. Good job, men's health. Jesus. Grip work is essential as it seems to be one of the limiting factors in the gym. We pepper in various exercises to keep grip tight. Oh, you know what the limiting factor is in the gym for most people? It's actually going to the gym. The limiting factor of the gym is commitment, not doing a wrist curls. Forearm work isn't the limiting factor in the gym. The limiting factor in the gym is getting your ass committed and actually going. Work your forearm, it's fine, it's great, but like, let me tell you right now, he's not doing forearm work. He's adding this shit in. Like, who sees forearms? These guys are crazy. Here we see some examples more relatable to MMA training, keeping the body in check with offset loading and movements more imperative to sport. These are good to do for just like overall just cardio. Training like a UFC fighter is stupid cardio. Absolutely. And it'll 100 that whip you in shape. That's all I'm giving them in that. You know what? Training like a UFC athlete because you're going in a film with somebody who's from the UFC. Because you got to fight and you got to make sure you can take some punches and kicks and roll around the ground. That's not what you're doing. You're doing UFC stuff because it's great cardio. It's challenging as hell, 100%. Stop it. 
It's important to keep the stimuli broad Swiss with bar. variations of reps, sets, loads, and different tempos. Floor press lets you train your chest heavy by limiting range of motion. Why do we need to limit range of motion? My man needs a big ass chest. Get his ass on a bench with some dumbbells or a regular ass bar or even machine. Get his ass some four inch motion so we can get some volume in that chest of his. What are you talking about? As an actor, there's no reason for him to be doing this. Do two sets of 10 to 12 reps. No tempo, no nothing, just, just do it. What? Critical, critical for maintaining and looking a certain way. It's not something that's sustainable, but it can be done with the right people in place. There's a big team that helped get us through this. The Perry Workout Nutrition from Biotest, the Surge, uh, really kept us going, gave us the fuel that we needed for these workouts. And the post workout nutrition from Rise. I've been in this game for a long ass time, y'all. And that sounds like a regular ass plug. Ain't nothing wrong with a plug. But just give it the right information. Look, for any of you who are serious about bodybuilding or simply keeping their body hair under control, I have an essential tool, the Brio Beardscape V2. Crafted with ceramic blade that's incredibly gentle on sensitive skin. On top of its superior cutting performance, the Beardscape V2 boasts a stronger motor, sharp blades, and an amazingly long lasting battery life. The upgraded display and improved grip makes it extremely user friendly. Brio has backed this incredible tool with a two year warranty and 60 day money back guarantee. With your purchase of the Beardscape V2, you get the body blade attachment for free, but it's only while supplies last, so do not wait. Guys, this isn't just any sponsorship at all, guys. I've been using the Beardscape V2 for the last like three months. Before this, I was using my T-liner to groom my body. Ouch. So look, guys, if you're ready to take your grooming to the next level, click the link in the description below. And hey guys, I wanna give a huge thanks for Brio for sponsoring today's video and creating a product that stands out from the crowd. Anyway, guys, let's get back to the show. If you're training and you want to lose fat, get yourself in a deficit, eat some very good nutrient dense foods, make sure your fiber is high, make sure your protein, your fats are high, be in that deficit and you're good, take enough calories in, do some cardio and then use whatever protein you want to use. And if you want to use my protein, you go ahead, man, use my code Johnny10 for 10% off Blue Star Nutraceuticals. But like really use any protein you want. Whatever you're using at home, use whatever protein you want. None of this matters if you don't have the right person to do it all. Jake did the work. He earned it. He deserves it. And I respect that. Now, look, let me just give you something down. Like, look, if he's actually doing these kind of UFC type style workouts, I've been through it before. And I got like, I got my ass whoop straight up. I was a hundred percent. I respect it too, because that kind of training is actually insane. I am recently in jujitsu right now, and it is absolutely insane. It's unbelievable type of cardio, the mental fortitude you need to be just relaxed, control your breathing, to preserve oxygen, all those things that it takes. I understand, I get it, 100%, I'm doing it. So I 100% get it, I actually do respect if he's actually doing this stuff all the time. But I honestly believe that he's doing a bit of it, and I don't really know if he's really doing all of this all of the time. Again, these kind of workouts are not necessary. And we're doing some Tabata training. Is this Tabata we're doing here? We're doing 20 seconds on, 30 seconds off, eight rounds. That kind of training is pretty tough. It's gonna whoop you into shape. Doing this stuff will 100% get your heart rate up. You'll burn a lot of calories, definitely. Now, if he's doing this for that reason, just say it. I would have better if he was like, hey man, I'm Jake's trainer. We're here in Hollywood and we gotta get his ass whooped in some good ass shape. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put him through some UFC training. He's not gonna be fighting anybody or punching anybody, rolling around, nothing like that at all. But you know what? This type of training is extremely hard. It's gonna burn a lot of calories and we wanna just make things work a little quicker. So we're gonna put him through some UFC style training, put him through like hell week or whatever you wanna call it and we can whoop him into shape. Everything else, you don't gotta say all that shit. Don't give me all the fluff. My man ain't going to war. My man ain't fighting nobody. He's not punching Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor be the living shit at Jake General Hall. They're not trading punches. They're trading lines. That's all they're trading. Nonetheless, good exercise to do to burn some fat. Why? Because the entire body's working. It would be like getting on air assault bike, a Jacob's ladder, all great tools to burn a lot of calories because your entire body's involved. For sure, 100%. To take the long road, to take the hard road, to take the high road, to do this clean, no shortcuts, but what you earn, what you gain along the way by taking these roads is unlike anything else. It's yours. You built it, you earn it. 
So they just low key kind of like take a shot at some of these other Hollywood actors. I think they just did. I think he really just took a shot to do it clean. I'm pretty sure he took a shot at the rest of Hollywood. So if that's the case, cool, good for them. You know what, good for you guys, awesome. You know, one thing I can say right now when it comes to this is I watched the movie, I seen what Jake Hall looks like. He looks great. They did a great job getting him in shape. It looked realistic. It looked like he is actually, he could fight. But that's exactly what they're doing. They're acting. They're put in an environment to be able to make it look believable. So this entire men's health display here is great acting. Do I believe he was probably doing this all the time? I don't think so. Maybe here and there to get himself at least like a custom used to. A lot of actors like to go through the training or, you know, method acting. Basically like his role was a ex UFC fighter that, spoiler alert, UFC dude that killed his boy in the ring, but he's like the biggest, baddest, most baddest, badass UFC fighter ever in the world apparently. And that's his role. So like, obviously when you go into these roles, you want to reflect what you're doing, you want to showcase that. Probably doing some UFC training makes a lot of sense. And I believe he was doing that, but not to the extent that they're showing. Again, when it comes down to it, Jake Gyllenhaal's biggest asset is him delivering lines so you believe it. That's it. The action scenes are good. They're good old fighting action scenes, but no one's getting punched. No one's actually getting kicked. You might be getting thrown, but you're getting thrown onto a, a nice mat, and you're getting thrown very lightly, right? Understand that you're not getting chucked around, and if you are getting chucked around, that's when like, yo, hey, stun double, get in here, bro. Hey, thanks, Jake. Take a breather, Jake. We're getting your boy in here real quick. All right, throw his ass around. That's what's happening. That guy right there, the stunt man, I want to see his actual training. Men's health, show me some stunt actors doing their training. If you show me, if you're like, hey, I'm Jake Gyllenhaal, stunt double, and I'm gonna show you what I did to get myself in shape for this movie. I would be like, 100%, he's doing all of it. Guarantee it, guarantee. But Jake, <laughs> some of it. Anyway, guys, there's my reaction. There's my opinion coming from an actual stunt actor myself, an IBB pro, strength conditioning coach, nutritionist, father, musician. I do it all. And I suggest you guys try it too. I'm not saying do what I do. I'm saying take a shot at yourself. Throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Take all the things that you want to do, that you've strived to do, and just try. Take a shot. See what happens. Because literally what I did, and that's why I'm here today critiquing actors and myself, an actor, and, well... A few moments later... This is some of my scripts. The ink ran out and I need to print out 40 more pages to this script that I gotta get ready because we start filming in the next month. So, hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. You know I'm gonna come with that it is transparent, vulnerable truth, and for coaching, johnashieve.com. Book yourself a one hour video consult. We'll chat about training, nutrition, supplementation, or even mental health. And at the end of that consult, I give you back a hundred bucks for any package that you pick. Anyway guys, until next time, you know how it is. Iron Sharp is Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep James chasing. Peace.